Hello everyone, this is the Paper Princess. Welcome to all my new subscribers and thank you for all my old subscribers and loyal subscribers. I really appreciate uh, you being supportive and everyone's so nice online. And uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun making this album. So in this video, we are going to make the base of the album. Uh, so I'm gonna set this aside. This is our fall festival album using Minte papers. And it's just gorgeous. So without further ado, let's get started making the base of the album. So I, I do have to say that in this video, uh, I can show you how to make the whole base of the book, but I can't show you how to make the hinge. But since this is eight and a half by eight and a half, you know that your hinge is gonna be seven and a half inches and you'll take a piece of paper seven and a half by 12 and make your hinge. That information is online. Um, Kathy King designed the system for it and that is at www.paperphenomenon.com. If you've made any of our albums, you'll know how to make a hinge. My particular hinge is gonna have three quarter inch hinges with three quarter inch spaces between. So I can't show you that, but it is out there and other people do have the license online and they do teach it online. So let's get started. You need two pieces of 90 point chipboard eight and a half by eight and a half. So what I did to make it easier for myself is I bought a piece of eight and a half by 11 and then I just needed to cut eight and a half off the 11 inch side. I cut one piece um, off. I did that for both pieces. You wind up with two leftover pieces. You take those pieces, wrap a piece of tape around them and that's gonna be used as your spacer because between the front and back cover and your spine, you need a space that is two widths of whatever chipboard um, you're using. So t save those pieces that you left aside and that will be your little spacer. Cut a piece, one piece that's eight and a half by four. When you do, make sure that when it's held vertically, and this is your four inch side, that that's the stiff side, not the other way. So it makes a difference where you cut. So cut eight and a half and then four, okay? So let's get started taping these and then I will show you how to make the, um, the Pete, you'll need a very long piece of black cardstock. I will show you how to make that and that will wrap around these pieces of chipboard. Okay, so let's take a piece and I'm using two and a half inch score tape uh, I just searched score tape on Amazon and found this, so I, they have lots of sizes. You can use three inch, two inch, four inch, um, whichever you would like. But basically, when we're making all our flaps, we're using a small three eighths inch. It, you could, if you wanted to, use this, but it would just take you a long time. So in the interest of saving time, I got myself a thick roll. If you are going to be making albums, it's a good investment to have that, and you will have put that roll of tape to very good use. Okay, so at the end, I'm just gonna cut. It's a little too thick for me to use my tear tool. I'll mainly do that with the smaller uh, 3 8 inch, but I've tried it before and it comes out a little jig jaggedy, so I just turn it over and cut. get close to the bottom just put a piece at the bottom and then we can fill in this space with a smaller tape okay and for this I can use my tear tool just a piece of plastic uh, I got, you can get that at a craft store in the sewing section they have that. And I put a telephone dot right there just to hold it. Okay, so when you've got that all covered, take your bone folder. And uh, this is a thick one. This is um, Teflon and they sell these online too. I just love it. The thinner ones that are plastic that come with a lot of scoreboards, you would just take those on the side like that. 
but whichever you do, you're just trying to get these bubbles out. That's just the purpose of that. And you help make the glue stick better. And I'll set that aside and do the next one. Now I did start this one, but this was for something else. So I'm just gonna finish that. If I ever get ahead of you, which I am now, um, just pause. That's the beauty of this. Sometimes you're in a class and the teacher's going too fast. The wonderful thing about making this online is you can go at whatever pace you want. Okay. And I'm gonna take my four inch. I can use my two and a half inch and then maybe, you know, I'll have a inch and fill in the space with my three eighths. I do have that but I happen to have this roll that I bought. It, it's a four inch roll. It's kind of hard to work with because it's really wide, but it's perfect for the spine. So I'm going to do that. You don't have to have this big roll. Just take two of your pieces of this and cut off what's left over at the end. You can do that. I'm just trying to get rid of this. I just have a little bit left. But since a lot of my books are four inches, if you want to get a roll of that and just use it for the spine, you could. Whatever is easier and most economical for you, we're just trying to just cover that. That's it. Okay. Okay, now for our Tyvek. So, what we want to do, we take a mailer envelope, and I have this one cut out already, but you, the basic idea is you, if this is eight and a half, cut a piece that's eight and a half, and then leave a couple inches on each side. So this would be eight and a half by eight, this little piece of mailer envelope. So just cut that out, and then we're going to cover this with our score tape. piece at the bottom. All right. And then I'll cover this. If you have a little bit of space, that is okay. It won't make a difference. All right, so I've got all my pieces there, and now I need to get a big piece of my black cardstock. And what I'm going to do, okay, I've got two pieces of 12 by 12, uh, and one piece, I have lots of these left over from all the cuts that I make. I usually use these when I make the pockets in the book, but take a piece that's four inches by 12. It could be four and a quarter. This leftover happens to be four and a quarter, so I'm just gonna leave it. I don't need to cut off that extra quarter inch, but you want at least four inches. And what we're gonna do is score this piece half inch on both sides. So I have the flat side facing up, and you can either use a score runner like this or a scoreboard with a bone folder. I just happen to think these are quicker myself, but whichever one you choose, you want a half inch on both sides. All right, and 
And then I'm going to take our 3 8 inch score tape. Now we're on the on the textured side. And I'm going to put right below this score line a piece of tape. these over okay all right so the reason we can't simply use two I'm going to turn these over so my flat side is facing up we can't just use two because it's just not enough room here. You know, there's just, you gotta leave space on each side and there just isn't enough room. So I've experimented with it a lot. And even though this piece is four inches, I mean, it could be short. We are gonna have to cut a piece off of here. What we're trying to do is not have our spine right in the crease. You can't have that. It'll just crack. And and after years of open closing the book, after a week of opening and closing the book, it'll just come unglued. So lots of experimenting. Four inches works the best. So I thought I'd explain my reasoning. But anyway, we take a piece of 12 by 12, flat side up, flat side up. And we're just going to peel off our backing and stick this down onto here. Okay, so I will show you how I do it so that it's all nice and even. All right. So you've got the papers right flush up against each other. And the way you can tell is your table should not be showing in here. I've got my black cardstock got my spine piece and they're right up against each other and there's no space there. I'm just going to press down that side. Walk myself to the middle, press down the middle. Go to the end, adjust that a little because I see table and press that down. And then you just go like that and you have your, it's all even. Okay, we're going to do the same thing over here. Take your piece of 12 by 12. Actually, let me just clear the way here and do it again. We're going to take this piece off and do the same thing. And then we will have a nice long piece to work with. Right in the middle. And there we go. Okay. Looking good. All right. So now... Let's take a ruler. We want a little bit, at least a ruler's width. This is about two inches, I would say, um, on the side and on the bottom. So I'm gonna just, the easiest thing to do is to take my ruler here, hold it up against the edge, and draw a line. Okay, and then do that same thing on the bottom. Got it right up against the edge here. And what I'm looking for is this intersection point. That is where the corner of our front flap is gonna go and that will guide the rest of your cover and your spine. All right. Okay, so a couple things. We're gonna do a dry fit here. The corner of my front cover goes right here in the corner. I got the pencil line, pencil line here, my spine piece, and this piece. So what we want, we are looking for, if you ever make books in the future, um, this score line here cannot wind up in this, in this fold, in this uh, space here. It has to wind up on a solid piece which it does, it lands right about there. 
and this score line is right around here. That score line will be covered up with your design paper. You won't see it, but you, you're just trying not to have it land in this open space. Okay, so there's that. And what I want to do here, let's make it exact. There's my spacer. Whoops. There's a spacer. There's a spacer. Let's make a pencil line of where we're going to draw this line and we will cut that little piece off because that is too much. So we'll do that in a second, but first let's take our Tyvek. And what we want for this is basically we want it covering this spine with a little two inches on each side. So I'm gonna lay it over top it's gonna to wind up on the bottom, but I'm laying it over top. And all I wanna do right now is make a pencil mark right at this edge, and that will show me where to stick this down. Cause we're gonna stick this down first and then these pieces. So I've got my pencil mark there. Before we put any pieces, let's just cut off this excess piece we have over here. So now we are going to take our piece of tie back. Make sure I'm facing the right direction. Yep. And let's pull all these backings off and we're going to lay it down. So, now be aware it's very sticky and I can't move it. So I'm gonna lay it close to, there's my pencil mark on that side, I see it. And I'm gonna put this, bring this down to the pencil mark on the bottom and just lay it down. There we go. And do not worry if you're a little bit over that way or over this way, you want it in the general vicinity of where you wanted to start it. And we have extra room on each side for leeway because it's got two inches on each side. So, but that is where you want it. All right, and now we're ready to start laying down our front and back covers. So, before we do that, and and I will show you how to do this carefully because if you stick it down prematurely, it's not in the right place, it's gonna be awfully hard to lift all that off. So watch carefully and that will not happen. Make sure, let's, we'll do one quick test to make sure we're facing the right direction before we stick this down. Well, I know I'm facing the right direction because I put this tape on horizontally, but just to be sure. No, I didn't. Okay. All right. We want our, I put it on the, but that's okay. We want the stiff side going up and down, not wobbly. Okay. So here we are. What I want to do, the idea is to, I've got my, the corner of this has to go in the corner here. This edge is going to go across along this pencil mark and bottom on the bottom. But you don't wanna just put it down cause that it's gonna be awfully hard to gauge and you don't wanna make a mistake. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna hold it at an angle like this. And all that's sticking down is this one little strip right here. So let's gently put the corner in the corner. The left-hand edge is along that pencil mark. And the bottom looks like from up here, it's going along the bottom. So I've got that and I'm gonna just, got it in place. I'm just gonna slowly let it down. There. All right, now 
the spine piece goes next and that's when you're going to bring in your little spacer we're going to hold this spine piece the same way at this angle it's like a 45 degree angle i've got my spacer here i've got my thumb i'm going to put my thumb along the edge of this front cover and spacer and then this spine piece so that I can feel that they're lined up. And I'm pressing this spine piece against this spacer. And I'm looking at the top, it's lined up. And I'm just gonna let it drop slowly. And it, actually, I'll move it up a smidge. There we go, and let it down slow. And there's my space. Got a nice space in between. And now let's do our last piece. This is my stiff side. So my tape is vertical. It doesn't matter as long as you know which side is your stiff side. Hold this at an angle. I've got my spacer here. This is at an angle. I can still move it because no, not, 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 not a lot, it's a tongue twister, of tape is, is sticking down right now. And that's why I hold it at the angle. I'm gonna look here, the spine and the back cover look lined up. I can feel them with my thumb, they're lined up. And I'm gonna just slowly let down the drawbridge here. And then lift that up. I like that space. If you're off just a little bit, that is not a problem. You just don't want to be off a lot. Okay. All right. So now let's tape all around the outer edge of the paper and all around the edges of the cardstock, I mean, of the chipboard. So I do not have to go all the way to the end because I'm going to be cutting a corner here. So, but I'm going to go all the way around. a little more on the top than on the bottom but that's okay it's like a little more than two inches but that is fine all right and then let's put tape all on the edge of this chipboard. Go all the way around. more
Okay, hold on. I am going to be BRB. I'll be right back. I'm going to get another roll. Ah, let me just look one more place. I thought I had extra rolls here. All right, I will be right back. You can guess what you need to do now. You need to press all these score tapes down. Just go all the way around. All right, now we're going to cut our corners off. So remember that little mitering tool? If you have one, you can just pull it out. If you don't, I'm going to show you what to do with the ruler. Okay, so there's like a little more than an eighth of an inch right here. So I'm going to put that here right in the corner and just draw a line. And that's where we're going to cut. If you don't have this, basically you want about two to three lines. So I'm just gonna err on the side of excess, put my ruler right at the corner at an angle and count over one, two, three lines right there. Put a little pencil mark and just draw a line. All right. So either way, this just, Helps me go quicker, I'm never wrong. So it's kind of worth having, but if you don't, you can absolutely get away with not having it and just using a ruler. So we'll tuck that away for my next book. And I'm gonna cut these corners. this paper to get used to bending because we're going to wrap it around this chipboard so I'm just going to just help it along a little bit before we get started. top and bottom first and then the sides. So watch because there's a trick to tucking in these corners. Let's take off all the bottom first. And I'm just using this as by Creative Memories. It's just a multi-purpose tool and it helps lift off the, the tape backing. You can also use a pick tool or Cricut tool or your fingernail, either way. So, what I'm gonna do is start in the middle here and take my hand on the table and then just roll up over and go like that. So ready, we're gonna start in the middle and just fold that paper over. And then I've got a little bit of an angle here. I'm gonna start 
start on the table and just roll up. I found that having it at an angle kind of helps a lot, so I'll do it the same way here. Okay, and then we'll just press this all down. And that is on there good, you can tell. Okay, I'm gonna take this um, bone folder and just press lightly in here, just because I'm going to be, I want that to be able to fold over real easy. Okay, and then we will do the same thing on the top. In the middle there and then I'm gonna go like this and press this down And as you can see, my score lines are on the chipboard. They're not in space. I am happy, happy. Okay, so now the, the edges. Now, what you want to do here, if I were to just fold this over, you can see that a little piece of this corner sticks out. So we want to tuck that piece in that's right here. And it's real quick and easy. Think of wrapping a gift. You fold in your edges and then you fold up, fold up the, the side piece. So I'm gonna take my bone folder and just tuck in that little corner piece that's hanging there. And just, it's bent over, you can see that. And just kind of go around the book like that. Take it on that side and go around. And then before you take off your tape, you can test it. Fold it over, you've got nothing sticking out here. It's a little piece sticking out there, so I'm gonna tuck that in. Must be how I cut it. So now I'll try it again. There. There we go. Okay, so now I take off this tape. And just take this and fold it over. And press it down. Okay, now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Tuck this piece in. Test it. So, on this particular album, I used um, brash embell embellishments on the outside corners that I just put on with the brad and taped down, but they do sell, if you're ever not happy with your corners in the future, they sell these brass embellishments that you put on the corner and then you just pinch it down and it stays on there. Um, Tim Holtz has it, Graphic 45 has it, these corners you can find in a craft store. So you can always do that if you ever don't like your your corners you, there's usually a way to get around every situation so we have our album now and there's one last thing we have to do okay remember that score tape i told you to get so this is about two inches it's black cloth um not score tape book binding tape and that's going to go right over these spaces so that on the other side right here where the book bends 
it'll have cloth right here. It looks super professional and this won't crack. Right now, this is just paper. It does have Tyvek under there, but it is just paper. So I wanna cover that. So let's take a piece of this book binding tape. Now, I wanna start, I never wanna start right at the top cause you'll see the edge of your tape. So you wanna bring that down about an inch. And basically here's your space. And I'll put that right in the middle of the cloth tape and I put that down. Then I'm gonna fold the book over and keep going. Fold it over again. does not have to be perfectly lined up. You won't see this. You, um, the only thing you're going to see is just this little piece on the on the back, just, just right here. So this line here, that will all be covered up. So I am happy with that. Let's do the next one. there. It's not as sticky as score tape or anything. So if it gets a little wrinkle, you can lift it up and press that on. So I'm going to roll it over. I'll use this line as a guide. That is it for this video. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to have my hinge already in on my spine. It sticks out a little bit. And then we will, we will cover this space right here and put a pocket here and start on page one. So I will see you soon in the next video.